Greetings, my friends. I want to thank you all for subscribing. I want to thank all of my channel members for supporting me in this endeavor to save pop culture. And if you are not subscribed, please consider supporting this channel. We need you. Thank you. Greetings, my friends. I am Dictor Van Doom Cock, the future ruler of Earth, broadcasting from my hidden base at the center of the Earth, and I am here today to discuss the recent wave of layoffs at the Walt Disney Company and, indeed, all across Hollywood. Now, we've had many, many layoffs over the past couple of years, but these layoffs are different because these layoffs are fewer in number but higher in terms of corporate hierarchy at Disney. Folks, it's no secret that things are tough in Hollywood. At the same time these layoffs are happening at Disney, Paramount Global is still in the process of purging 15% of their global workforce, thousands of employees as they clean house in an effort to cut costs to the tune of $500 million per year in preparation for their merger with Skydance. But these Disney firings are particularly interesting because these cuts are drawn from Disney corporate operations. Hmm. Could it possibly be that Disney is finally learning the lessons I've been trying to teach them? That you can't succeed by trying to sell shit to customers that they don't want? Could it possibly be the failure of the Acolyte? The collapse of the Star Wars franchise? The fact that the latest MCU TV show is crashing in a cackling cauldron of suck? All are having the effect of teaching Disney the wages of woke is broke? I couldn't speak to that, Harvey Cthulhu, but I can share a little bit of what the trades are telling us about the situation, and we can speculate based on what information we get. Deadline, for example, a prime trade publication, had this to say in an article titled, Disney Layoffs Underway, Hundreds of Corporate Staffers Impacted. Quote, Exclusive. More layoff news in what already has been a depressing week. Disney is in the middle of a new wave of cuts as part of a cost-saving initiative, sources tell Deadline. We hear about 300 or so people are affected by the layoffs that started yesterday and are continuing today and tomorrow, with a possibility to stretch beyond that. The positions, all based in the U.S., are across Disney's corporate operations, including legal, HR, finance, and communications, we hear. Among the divisions that are not impacted in this round are parks, ESPN, as well as Disney Entertainment, unquote. Ah, shit. So I guess this had nothing to do with the Acolyte or Agatha all along, eh? Well, not necessarily, Harvey Cthulhu. Obviously, a company starts laying people off when they feel a need to save money by shrinking expenses. So, the more prosperous a company is, the less likely they are to do such a thing. So the failures that we're seeing in the entertainment divisions of Disney must certainly be impacting this decision. Plus, the entertainment division was already called to a certain extent in previous layoffs, as the article makes clear. Quote, Today's cuts follow the July 31st round of layoffs at Disney Entertainment Television, when about 140 people were let go, representing about 2% of the total Disney Entertainment Television workforce, and Disney Animation Studio Pixar reducing staff by 14% in May." Unquote. So that may have been more directly inspired by this recent string of failures at Disney Harvey Cthulhu, but clearly, the entirety of Hollywood is feeling the sting of the truth you utter. The wages of woke is broke. Consider, quote, Disney's layoffs started yesterday on the same day Paramount Global laid off hundreds in the second round of its own layoffs, aiming to cut 15% of the company's U.S. workforce, with Paramount Plus getting the brunt of the cuts. In addition to Disney and Paramount's multiple rounds of staff reductions, Fox Entertainment eliminated about 30 positions through a restructuring in July. There were also layoffs at Warner Brothers Discovery the same month. So perhaps this seems linked to the streaming service malady afflicting Holy Woke. In their mad rush to duplicate the success of Netflix, everyone thought 
they could mount a streaming service of their own, but instead of leading to a pot of gold, it led to fracturing the audience and causing a lot of people, confronted with too many streaming choices, not to subscribe to them all, but to throw up their hands and walk away, especially giving the paucity of quality entertainment. It would seem that way, O Skull of Calderon. Plus, I have to say this, folks. There's something to be said for the old school of advertising. As much as I dislike commercials on network television, the commercial model of sponsorship was a guardrail for quality, a guardrail that streaming has taken away. In the commercial model, the bigger a hit the show is, the more they can charge for advertising. But in the streaming model, it doesn't matter how big a hit a show is if it can't be demonstrated to bring in new subscribers. Subscribers are the life's blood of streaming services, not advertising. Now, Netflix has about as many subscribers as they're going to get. I mean, they have subscribers through the roof. Everybody has heard of Netflix, and most people have made their choice regarding Netflix. So it's going to be a very rare show that boosts anything significantly in terms of subscribers, which means an expensive show that's a huge hit is still likely to get canceled to save money because it doesn't actually move the needle for new subscribers. So we fans get screwed, great shows get screwed, all because of a flawed streaming model that doesn't reward brilliance or particularly punish crap if the crap is cheap enough. I think all of these layoffs, to some extent, reflect this sad truth. Yes, wokeness certainly doesn't help. Over time, it damages a corporate brand like Disney to the extent that parks and merchandise start to suffer. In terms of impacting theme parks, Yahoo Finance recently had an article titled Disney Theme Parks Have Seen a Slowdown, Is It a Temporary Blip? And in this article they say, Disney's parks business has historically captured the lion's share of profits for the entertainment giant, bringing in about 36% of the company's overall revenue in the latest quarter. But recent signs of a slowdown have led to concerns the theme parks could be losing their magic. In Disney's latest earnings results, weakness in the parks division dented an otherwise positive report after the company reported a 6% year-over-year drop in domestic operating income and pointed to a moderation of consumer demand towards the end of the second quarter. This moderation, executives warned, could continue over the next few quarters. Ah, the moderation, eh? Well, to me, Doomcock, that moderation springs from all the wokeness that is out there in the culture. People saying no to Disney, closing their wallets. It's the symptom of the Disney brand damage that has been done by the woke virus. I agree entirely, Harvey. It's very, very simple. You cannot alienate your customers and expect to prosper. But that said, overall, I think the streaming model is death for Hollywood. And I think we're just going to keep seeing this sort of thing more and more as time goes by. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay angry. Ha, 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 ha,